So recurrent dislocation Patel, the planning and the management, this is one of my favorite topic and I need at least uh, more than four hours, but I have to concise everything in 10 minutes. I will try to do justice uh, with this topic. So as we know, the patellar instability can be due to the bony factors or soft tissue factors. Bony factors could be primary, like uh, patella alta, which uh, we can see here. It could be due to increased TTTG distance, which is clinically as an increased skew angle. It could be due to trochlear dysplasia, or it could be due to excessive patellar tilt. So these are the primary bony factor, and these are the local factor. But there could be a distant factor, like a genuine valgus, excessive femoral antiversion, which can be diagnosed by a correct test clinically. There could be external TBL, external rotation, which leads to malalignment and patellofemoral instability, which you can diagnose clinically by thigh foot angle. There are certain soft tissue uh, factors for patellar instability divided further into local and the distance. The, the most important factor is MPFL, which works in first 30 degree. Other structure like VMO, lateral retinoculum, foot hyperpronation, IT bend are other possible factors. So 60% of patient has got more than one pathoanatomy. And this is the imbalance between the two, which leads to the recurrent dislocation of the patella. So what you need basically is a good clinical evaluation and a, of course a good radiologist who can evaluate your patellofemoral pathology very well. So clinical evaluation begins with the tenderness uh, tracking test and the J sign. If J sign is symmetrical, it means there is a TT malalignment. If it's asymmetrical, it's a MPFL tear. Patellar glide test, apprehension test, you can see very well while doing a lateral, there is a sudden contraction of the cordyceps, that is the apprehension test and you have to do a patellar lift off test to check for the patellar tilt and the retinacular tightness. Radiological evaluation is the key factor for uh, planning. So patella alta, you can see very well in 30 degree knee flexion. There are n number of indexes which are defined. I usually prefer to use a Catan Deschamps index. If it's a more than 1.2, it's a patella alta, which is a ratio from a patellar tendon to the superior articular surface and the patellar articular surface. So if so, it's a more than 1.2, you need to address the patella alta while you are performing the surgery. Lateral X-ray not only will show you the patella alta, it's going to show you the trochlear dysplasia as well, which can be seen by a crossing over sign, double contour sign, which has been described by David Dijor and it has been classified into four types, A, B, C, D. A skyline view will give you the sulcus angle, congruence angle to see for the patella tilt. Always get a standing scanogram to see for the malalignment in varus, valgus and the Q angle. Uh, there is a controversy, but I usually get a combi pain for all, almost all my patients for patellar instability. I always order for a CT as well as MR because TTTG distance I feel more reliable in a CT scan. So if TTTG is more than 20, it's uh, abnormal. MRI definitely will help you for the trochlear dysplasia, patella alta, patella tilt, TTTG distance and a MPFL tear, which already been described by Dr. Chitali just now. So if you're getting a combi scan done, ask for this certain parameters from your radiologist that the report should contain TTTG distance, patella alta, trochlear depth and index, patellar tilt, sulcus angle, MPFL and the osteochondral lesion. So how to treat the, uh, the this kind of recurrent dislocation of patella? If there is a bony problem, you have to go for a bony solution. If there is a patella alta, you have to go for a distalization if uh, CD index is more than 1.2. If there is increase in TTTG, then you have to go for a medialization. If this both is there, then you have to go for distalization as well as medialization. For trochlear dysplasia, what I do is a trochleoplasty. I do a open trochleoplasty. For rotational problem and the valgus knee, you have to go for a derotation osteotomy and a distal femoral osteotomy. So TTO, what I do, I uh, put the guide wire first and then I use this mini saw. With the mini saw, I cut hole of the tibial tuberosity because in this case, I want to correct the patella alta. You can see, I'm able to pull hole of the high riding patella and because the patient was having increased TTTG, I have done the medialization as well. And this I fixed with the three screws. So once I am doing a distalization and medialization, I will use three CC screws for TTO. Otherwise, I will use a two screws, a two CC screws for just for a medialization. Trochoplasty, I, I use uh, this uh, special kind of a zig basically, which is uh, provided by the Arthrex, which has got 3 mm and a 5 mm drill. So trochoplasty, what you are doing, you are lifting more of the cartilage. So this is the kind of zig that I use. You lift the cartilage, you go below the cartilage, you take a flap of the cartilage along with the bone. 
you keep on drilling hole of the cartilage you make a thin uh, flap of a hole of the cartilage and then you just compress it and fix it with the anchor so trochloeplasty should be done whenever is a trochlear dysplasia particularly if the type b and type d so if patient is coming to the first time dislocation i will always consider all my first time dislocation but there are exceptions if patient is having a intraarticular fragment then you have to do a remove this osteochondral fragment like you can see in the superior uh, arthroscopic video and i usually combined with the arthroscopic mpl mpfl repair along with the removal of osteochondral uh, fragment if there is a mpfl avulsion from the bone then also you require a repair so when to do a mpfl reconstruction mpfl is the major restraint so all cases of recurrent dislocation you to do a mpfl but if there are associated bony pathology you to add a trochloeplasty and tto if you are not adding a trochloeplasty or tto then your mpfl is either going to fail or patient is ultimately going to end up into a patellofemoral arthritis but when not to do a mpfl you should remember if patient is already developed arthritis usually you must be seeing a patient who is around 45 female and already had got uh, multiple episodes of dislocation If you do a simple skyline view, there would be changes of patellofemoral arthritis, a contraindication for MPFL repair. Habitual in a permanent dislocated patella, you should not do MPFL. Now, how to do MPFL? You do just do a diagnostic scopy. You need a graft of your choice. You need two tunnels in the patella and one tunnel in the femur. How to choose this point? For this, I use a two centimeter incision. You can see here in this uh, second video. So this is the first layer I am dissecting, then second layer, then I expose whole of the patella. I am developing a plane between the second layer, so you have to stay above the capsule. So once this is done, you have to identify where exactly is the patellar attachment of MPFL. MPFL is attached at around uh, width of 28 millimeter. So this is the attachment of MPFL. There are multiple options for patella side. but i usually prefer to use a two socket technique and i use the knotless anchor for the graft fixation but any of the above methods can work well but there are certain disadvantage of all above methods there are chances of fracture or the tunnel collapse so what i do basically i drill the 24.5 mm hole on the superior pole of patella just 3 3 mm below and then the second drill with a gap of 10 mm in between then i use a two swivel lock anchor So you can see I am passing this first anchor. This is the graft semi-tee I usually prefer. So this, you can see I am passing onto the first first point. This is the first hole in which the graft is going in into that socket with the anchor. Now this is the second anchor. So once you put the second anchor, then your half of the job is done. You fixed your graft onto the patellar side, and you can check the stability. It's quite stable. so this is a two incision technique so you can pass this the same graft on the femoral side now the femoral point uh, you should be very anatomical on the femoral point the, the the thing that you should remember it is ad44 the attachment is 2 mm anterior and 4 mm 4 mm distal to the adductor tubercle so this is the point where you need to do, do a drilling for your mpfl intraoperative you to check for the shortest point the shortest point is 1 mm anterior to the posterior femoral cortical line it is 2.5 mm distal to the posterior region of femoral condyle and is just proximal to the posterior point of lunacent's line so once uh, you have done everything uh, you got a mpfl kit so i usually use this kind of a uh, transparent zig kind of a thing i will put this zig so that you can drill through this and i will confirm my point under image intensifier so that the isometric point is once isometric point is confirmed then i will start my drilling this graft is passed between the second and the third layer and you can see when the graft is passed then i am not started drilling i am just putting the guide wire and i am checking for the isometry so if the isometry is correct my mpfl should become loose in the flexion so once i confirm that my isometry is correct then i will go ahead and do a proper drilling what will happen if your non isometric so if you are high then it would be tight in flexion if you are low then it would be loose in flexion if it's an anterior it would be loose in extension so this graft mal positioning is going to affect the kinematics of the knee so once you are sure you have to drill the final diameter and this just i pass the graft into the tunnel and once this is done i will use a bio screw to fix my 
femoral point. So this is how uh, MPFL reconstruction is done. So once you are fixing the femoral side, you have to secure the graft in 30 to 45 degree range of motion. Over tightening the graft in extension can lead to medial subluxation of patella. Over tightening flexion can lead to loss of flexion. So ideally fixed in between 30 to 45 degree. So this is the final closer of uh, retinoculum. And this is how the interop picture of the centralization. You can see if, if you are able to see, this is the MPFL that you are able to see outside the capsule. I am just putting my finger onto that. So this is the final picture after a MPFL reconstruction. So to conclude, uh, you to look for the bony abnormality if you want to combine with the TT and trochloplasty, which should always be done if it's uh, there. You to mark the two points in the patella, one point, shuttles point in the femur. Check for the isometry and fix. And MPFL is a check ring, does not do a over constraint. Thank you.